Hey everybody, um, I wanted to do a quick video kind of just going over how some of these sound functions work in LabVIEW. Um, so I've got this VI we'll walk through. Um, basically we are just, and I can run this while I'm talking so you can see, um, but we're basically just collecting sound data through the um, uh, microphone. Um, over here we're displaying basically the amplitude in the time domain um, and then over here we are using an FFT to take that into the frequency domain um, so yeah here's just kinda raw sound amplitude over time versus raw sound amplitude you know in the frequency domain um, I also have a calculation here uh, basically noise and decibels um, not super calibrated or anything, but just showing kind of how you can do this. And I'll walk through the code on how I'm doing that. Um, but yeah, you can see like, right, when I go quiet, everything kind of stabilizes. And then as I start talking, you know, everything starts going up. Um, I also have this set up so I can log this data to a sound file. So if I wanted to record my voice or record some other sort of sound, I can do that and I can specify the log path. Um, so let's go take a look at the code to see how we're doing this. So I have three loops here um, in our code. Um, so first off, we're going to use this sound input configure. So um, this is the function that's basically going to set up our sound acquisition. And I'm setting it up for continuous sample. So this is a lot like setting up a data acquisition device. We're defining uh, continuous samples and we also need to specify the number of samples per channel so we're sampling uh, 10,000 samples per channel and a device ID so zero is going to be your default microphone if you want to specify a different you know kind of input device you can just your default one is going to be zero um, lastly there's this sound format um, which we basically just specified um, like the uh, number of bits and you know uh, here, let me stop this so I can have it show up a little better but yeah basically we have the sample rate the number of channels and the bits per sample so um, yeah we've defined that um, and then we're just going to use this sound input start so this starts our actual data acquisition task um, so we start reading data from the microphone um, and then in this loop over and over, we're just going to use this sound input read function, which is going to basically pull data out of that queue. We're pulling it out, pulling out a waveform um, uh, over and over and over again. Um, that uh, waveform is being written directly to this time graph, which is the one on the left. Um, and we're also breaking that apart and um, using this FFT function to take both the left and right audio and putting that into the frequency domain and then graphing that there. Um, up here, this is just a little bit of math that I'm using to basically calculate the decibel levels. Like I said, this isn't necessarily a calibrated, uh, you know, super precise way to do it, but this is how you can do it. Um, so basically you're gonna take your sound level and um, divide that by a relative zero decibel level. So you need to define what is your zero decibel level um, and that's going to change obviously based off of like the room you're in and you know whatnot but basically just find and even the sensors you're using right your microphone you're using um, just need to you know determine what that zero level is and then you're going to take the log of that and then multiply by 20 and that will get you to your decibel level so um, that's what I'm kind of doing um, the zero level can probably be adjusted there though. But yeah, so this is just gonna run over and over and over again. Um, and then when uh, I just have a notifier set up, so I have a queue, first of all, right? So we can write that waveform data to a queue um, if we wanna log it. I also have a notifier. And so this notifier is how the UI is letting it know whether it should be logging or not. Um, so when it's uh, outputting a true, that's when we're going to enqueue this data and this bottom loop. All it does is when there's data available in the queue, it writes it to the sound file over and over and over again. So, you know, pretty simple. Um, and 
Um, yeah, and then let's just take a look at our event loop. There's really not a lot going on, but we have um, when this uh, log value change, um, we are basically prompting for a WAV file and opening a new uh, sound file. And if we're in read and log, if we're in read only, right, we're going to close out the previous sound file. Um, but if we're switching to read and log, then we're going to open the sound file and basically tell the notifier to start enqueuing the data, you know, so that this loop will start logging it. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, right, timeout does nothing, and panel close, we're just kind of destroying stuff so that everything shuts down successfully. So that's pretty much it. Um, the sound functions are pretty easy to get working with, not super complicated. Um, and I mean, I'm not a, an acoustics expert or anything, but yeah, just wanted to show basically from that sound waveform data, how can you calculate the decibel level of the sound? Um, how can you get an FFT of the sound? And how can I log that sound to a file if I wanted to play this, sound, this audio back later? Um, so yeah, that would be uh, kind of uh, sound and audio fundamentals um, in LabVIEW. Thanks for watching. Canon Controls is your gateway to mastering LabVIEW. Dive into programming for data acquisition, industrial communications, and manufacturing automation. Explore how to enhance your projects with cybersecurity best practices. Join the journey to elevate your skills and secure your systems with every episode.